Hello friends and welcome to another episode of Fire Emblem Discussion. Today I'm responding to your comments on the video enemy reinforcements. So let's get started. First off, I just want to give a big thank you to Macaroon who left a comment that said, okay, I haven't watched the video yet, but there is some more Fire Emblem Three Houses news thanks to Famitsu. So I really appreciate that because it gave me a heads up. I don't really, I stopped following Reddit and stuff like that. So if you guys ever hear news and stuff that I miss out on for whatever reason, make sure to let me know. I really appreciate it. So thank you very much. All right, so now let's move on to the actual conversation. So first we have Samuel Cron who said, Generally, I don't mind reinforcements, and I would say that it makes sense that the enemy would have reinforcements to call upon. As to begin with, on average, the player is dealing with a smaller team of ragtag units. Your forces are much smaller in comparison to the enemy, so on that note, I think it makes sense that the enemy would have reinforcements to call upon. So, from a story standpoint, as Samuel points out, it makes total 100% sense that in pretty much every story in Fire Emblem, that the enemy would have some manner of reinforcements and your units would not have the same access to reinforcements. I like that he points that out. That makes a total sense to me personally, so I appreciate that. And he continues to say, my favorite dealing of reinforcements is the Yugdraw games, in in particular FE4, and Tellius were often and Tellius where often enemies would walk onto the map from the side through some opening. Now yes, some reinforcements are good for grinding up either a weak, weaker unit or maybe there's a unit close to, maybe there's a unit close to promotion that you want just a couple levels higher before promoting them. And in Thracia, reinforcements have an additional incentive, stuff to loot from enemies. Okay, that brings up another interesting point that I hate the idea of like I have to wait around for enemies to show up for me to get some item that they have. So, you know, there's like in that in that map with all the dancers in 3C776 with all the map, uh, it's with a Parn or Pern or whatever his name is where you recruit him and Tina and Shrewd. I absolutely hate that you have to like wait there for a while. You have to wait for a reinforcement that shows up with a master seal. Like that's just dumb to me. Like why? <laughs> just let me beat the map. Let it be like put it in a treasure chest somewhere. Make it something for me to go for rather than to wait for. I don't like that kind of use of reinforcements. But I don't mind the how they do reinforcements otherwise in Thracia. Yeah, I, I like everything else. Ambush spawns and stuff like that don't bother me. But we'll get into that more in a minute. So thank you for your comment. Uh, Samuel, he had, a, he had a lot more to say about other games in the series, uh, but we're going to move on to some other people so we, they have an opportunity to share their thoughts as well. All right, next we have Avery who says, let's say this first, ambush spawns should not exist. I disagree. I think ambush spawns are a good thing, and we'll talk about that again in, in a minute. Uh, he, Avery continues, generally I like reinforcements. They can drag them out a they can drag a map out, but when they are not present, something feels missing. They add a layer of depth to the gameplay, and if used properly, they are great. A good example is Chapter 13 of Erica's Route in Sacred Stones. When Pablo appears from behind with an army, they all rush you, and it applies a lot of pressure. If you haven't cleared out a lot of the other enemies, then Pablo's army poses a real threat. But if you manage to clear out most of the enemies beforehand, then you won't be sandwiched. So that is an extremely good use of reinforcements applying pressure to make the player adjust their strategy to make the player uh, be able to think on their toes and to be ready to uh, move units like correctly to like shift positions to defend like squish your units from behind or defend key points it also incentivizes playing quickly which I really appreciate I always I I, I, I wouldn't say I'm like Good, I'm like good at it or I'm like really into low turn count play but in like the Tellius games and st like in the Tellius games and in like Fates and stuff like that I re I'm really into trying to play quickly um, so I really appreciate that and that's a very good thought Avery thank you very much for your comment all right moving on to <laughs> uh, Ninja Bunny here who says I think there's a difference between a game like Thracia and a game like Awakening having ambush spawns so here we're getting more into ambush spawns again which I this is where we'll talk about a little more he continues, if you're if you're playing a Fire Emblem game like Thracia and you get ambushed, then it feels more acceptable than something like Awakening. When you play Thracia, it's evident that the game is an uphill battle, and it will surely punish you every time you start to think otherwise. So ambush spawns would just seem so 
So ambush spawns would just seem to be a counterbalance to players who aren't cautious enough when they overextend. In Awakening, however, ambush reinforcements are a much more punishing mechanic than anything else in the game. Uh, unless you're playing Lunatic Plus, but that's uh, but that's as unfun as Path of Radiance Mani Maniac mode, he says. So the experience of ambush spawns, which are fairly hard and annoying gameplay elements, doesn't mesh well with what is a far more laid-back Fire Emblem experience that is Fire Emblem Awakening. So that's actually a really interesting point. Ambush spawns should fit the theme of the map, and they should fit the theme of the game, even, is what Ninja Bunny is saying. I, I, I like that a lot, actually. I think... Thracia uses them perfectly because you know, it fits in with the capture mechanic being that like, oh, we don't have money so we need to capture people to steal their stuff so we can either sell it for money or to use it, use their weaponry, use their items. You know, you need to um, escape with everyone or they get captured. <laughs> uh, just all these little mechanics that ambush spawns mesh really well with. And I see what he's saying that like in Awakening, ambush spawns are kind of out of place. Where everything is honestly pretty laid back and really easy going, where you have, uh, you pretty much can just like raffle stomp the entire game with a pair up, with a couple of pair ups. But, anyways, just like it doesn't fit the narrative as well. You know, uh, a, a, you know, this prince leading a kingdom's army and then teaming up with another kingdom's, you know, the 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 Phyroxian army as well. You know, it just doesn't feel like the enemy should have this big access to reinforcements that are, can like surprise you and the player isn't afforded the same uh, opportunity to call reinforcements even though like it's one army one big army versus another big army i may be forgetting some uh story elements there but that's just kind of the my thought process on that so thank you ninja bunny for your comment i i agree with you there okay moving on to sorry if i say this name completely wrong shitendi aka I don't know if it's supposed to be Shitende, aka Tamanor, or it's like Shitende Aka Tamanor, or something. So, uh, cool name. Sorry, I can't say. Sorry, I'm not saying it quite right, but cool name. They say the problem with ambush bonds is that they change drastically the type of game, changing games to trial and error, whereas the goal of reinforcements is widely different. I think this is actually thoroughly linked with permadeath. Losing a unit is an important and dramatic event, so if it happens, it should be your fault, not something cheap. It betrays the overall message of the whole game. That's interesting. And it's a it's a good counterpoint to why ambush like that's a good counter counterpoint to ambush bonds, saying that Permadeath is so important to the overall experience of Fire Emblem that losing a unit should be your fault. It should be make you feel bad. But when a game does something like that the player perceives as unfair, such as, you know, ambush spawns, then they are more likely to be like, oh, well, the game did that. The game killed my character and are more likely just to be upset at the situation rather than to look at themselves and be like, oh, man, I lost this unit because of my poor planning and strategy, which is, I think, the point of permadeath. I think it is for the player to look at themselves and say, oh, I need to play better, not say, oh, the game is too hard or the game is cheap and did this poorly. So I really appreciate that comment. Thank you so much. That was really, really good thought. I really liked that one. All right, let's move on to uh, ZXKW, who says they should not be ambush spawns and they should only add to the map. So just kind of echoing some thoughts that other people have had about ambush spawns and <laughs> that it should own that it should add to the play experience i think that's really important that we haven't quite touched on yet if reinforcements take away from the play experience just like any other element in the game of course it shouldn't be there it should be taken away and i agree it should only add to the play experience it should only add to the map as a whole now moving on to Absol112 who says, I'm of the opinion that it depends on the chapter and the objective of the map. In route maps, they can add so much time to the chapter when some, sometimes I'm just done with it. Defense chapters, def, def, defense chapters definitely benefit from reinforcements and I bet Conquest Chapter 10 would be worse without them. The other question that's worth asking is how strong are the reinforcements? And in response to Absol112, Nick White replied, I agree with you, I really, it really just depends on the map and objective. This kind of feeds into the point that ZXKW was making, that it should add to the map. If it fits the objective, then fine. If it's a defend map, even if it's like a, a seize map, it's fine. An arrive map, a uh, defeat boss, anything to apply pressure. An escape mission definitely needs reinforcements because that just makes sense because people are trying to catch you. Stuff like that, I think, is 
a great point that we should have it should fit the objective of the map more than anything so thank you so much for your comments Absol and Nick and last but not least we're looking at again I still haven't learned how to say your name but thank you for all your comments uh, Charlay Awil who says like I said before, the reinforcement mechanic is kind of annoying and pointless most of the time. If it doesn't make sense in the story, I prefer almost not having it. But if it if it has to be there, I would say my favorite way it has been done is when the, the reinforcements spawn on a location that you can't block or deal with. I would say my favorite way it was done is when the reinforcements spawn on a location that you can't block or deal with as it just number one is more realistic and kind of more interesting way as well instead of making it boring so I I agree with like I, I'm I'm happy when fire emblem leans into realism in more instances than not but I also am totally okay with like the gamifying you know reinforcements and making it so you can block them and stuff so I see your point uh, Charlotte and I appreciate it and you know, uh, they go on to say much more about it. And I uh, say, you know, you guys should go back and read all the comments from everybody. They're all really good. Uh, I really appreciate everyone's thoughts. So thank you so much. As kind of a, a final thought here, I think reinforcements have been done relatively well in the series as a whole. I really appreciate ambush spawns when used correctly, and especially in Thracia, I think they're used well. Uh, it fits the theme of the game. Um, Reinforcement should definitely add to a map a map's design if it makes the map more tedious that's annoying but if it makes the map more difficult that's fine so if you're adding units for the sake if you're adding units that like aren't posing a threat at all they're just kind of there and then you have to go find them and kill them to clear the the route requirement that's annoying but if they're there to challenge you to chase you down to actually pose a threat I really appreciate that so those are my thoughts on reinforcements I'm pretty much fine with any way they've been done in the series I would say my favorite is probably like Tellius or Thracia uh, with a shout out to FE4. I like that as well. Um, but let me let me know more of your thoughts in the comments, guys. And of course, make sure to like and subscribe for more Fire Emblem. And of course, make sure to like and subscribe for more Fire Emblem discussion. And uh, check out my Instagram at Fire Emblem Discussion. My wife is being super awesome, and she actually. Uh, you know, it's kind of running that. She's doing a great job. So make sure to head over there and uh, follow. Uh, it means a lot. I'd appreciate it. So thank you so much. Again, make sure to like and subscribe for more Fire Emblem discussion.